And I had met the Capuchins originally when I was 20 years old, when I was a cadet at West Point, um, Hudson Valley. And I was reading at the time a lot about St. Francis of Assisi, a lot of his biographies, and became really you know, obsessed. I must have read four or five biographies that year, my sophomore year at West Point. I remember thinking to myself, wouldn't it be something if the followers of this man still existed? I had never met a friar to that point, and I went on retreat, you know, maybe a month later, my sophomore year, and met some Capuchin Franciscans. I, I grew up in Yonkers, and I was in a diocesan parish, and I uh, taught by the sisters, and then when um, I went to high school, the friars taught there. And it was the friars who taught me, who uh, kind of put the inspiration into my head that this is probably something I would like to try. My early recollections of the friars, I ended up working for a year at CYFM, the Capuchin Youth Ministries, as a, a Cap Corps volunteer working with the friars. So I got a great experience of Capuchin Franciscan community and also ministry. And there's a line in the biography of St. Francis by G.K. Chesterton that says, when Francis looked at somebody, it was like no one else in the world mattered. He, all his attention, all his effort, all his compassion was focused on that one individual. And I got that exact same impression from the friars I worked with, that they were all about the relationship. And I think that's sort of the pivotal insight of St. Francis, is that of relationship. We're called brothers, and we're called to be brothers to all people. Um, and this is sort of an insight that Francis takes from Jesus. In this past Sunday's Gospel, Jesus asked, what is the greatest commandment? And he answers with advice on relationships. First, love God with your whole self. And secondly, treat people as you want to be treated. So for Jesus, you know, even these laws depend on relationships. And I think that's a pivotal insight of St. Francis. And I went thinking that I would probably try and I never saw myself as terribly bright. So uh, I didn't think I would have the intellectual ability to go on. But somehow I found the intellectual ability and here I am. It was probably the first time I started to feel a little, a little down during the year, and it fortunately only lasted a few days. And what lifted me up was just the the presence of another brother, brother Tim Maller, who actually suggested that I consider joining the Capuchins, and we happened to be together to be together for that week at a college retreat. And during mass, I happened to look over and I just saw him standing there. And it was in that moment when I knew that was why I was here. And all of the fears and anxiety went away, and I knew I was right where I needed to be. So one of the greatest gifts and learning so far this year is learning that the brothers lift you up when they don't even know it, and they don't even have to speak to do that. So if I had to name the best experience so far, it was definitely that. And I had to go through a few hard days to get there, but it was definitely worth the moments of doubt or wonder to be lifted up by a brother in that moment. Well, what's interesting is um, <clears throat> All the blessings started as, I don't want to say a curse, okay, but they started out as something I really didn't think was going to be a positive thing in my life. But, you know, you get your marching orders, you go, and then once you get there, all of a sudden, you, that takes over, and um, I never wanted to be a teacher. I was a high school teacher for eight years, okay? Uh, I really never wanted to work in formation, and I did that for 10 years. And both those experiences were um, blessings for me. <laughs> and now I'm working with the senior friars, and that's a real blessing. Because these are the men who trained me, taught me, 
and to be able to help them at this point in their life to make the next step for them. They helped me make my steps and now I'm helping them make their steps. Is to have intergenerational friendships, friars who have been priests and religious for 60, 70 years. We have jubilarians, you know, that have been friars for 60 years. Um, and to live in a house with guys who are, like myself, young friars, also middle-aged friars and senior friars, you know, to share um, the energy of youth with the wisdom of experience. What a, what a joy it is to simply let people know how much God loves them and how much mercy God has for them. That's one thing that people never tire of hearing and also never be, the need to hear that is never exhausted for my life and for all of our lives. You know, there's always those ah, points of our life, those frictional relations we have that need reconciliation. Um, and God is never tired of telling us how much he's willing to enter into some of those messy things in our life. For Francis, this is the whole impetus of the incarnation. You know, the whole idea is that God desires to be born into the messiness of human life. You know, that's why for Francis, he sort of reenacts the crush scene at Greccio with actual animals and actual, you know, people. And it's, it's kind of a, a messy scene in a, in a little cave. And for him, that's the whole point, you know, that the incarnation doesn't happen in stained glass or, you know, beautiful um, frescoes or paintings. It happens in the reality of human existence, which is painful and messy, but yet God desires to be born into that. Um, I think when we ignore some of our woundedness and um, the parts of our life that aren't so reconciled, aren't so converted, that's when I think, you know, we're ignoring a great invitation that God is, is offering us to come in to offer healing and mercy to us.